G'day folks. Back in the 80s, I was trying to find a method of testing power supplies, regulated power supplies in electronic service business we were in at the time. And there wasn't anything much around. It was Well, there was test equipment, very expensive test equipment that you paid thousands of dollars for. But if you wanted something to provide a variable load at a set voltage, or sorry, a set current at a variable voltage, I guess is more the point. Uh, there just wasn't anything much around until October 1980 a magazine at the time called Electronics Today International brought out this kit <coughs> uh, electronic dummy load so what this does is lets you it provides a set current to draw from a source that can be a battery or a power supply or whatever um, and that can be up to 60 volts and, and a maximum load on this particular unit here was was 15 amps but you could set that and you could leave it on and it would dissipate that uh, current and load as heat in the heat sinks now it worked brilliantly I've still got it. it 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 works great but it's limited in what it can tell you except standing there looking at it it's great to test um, things that are working um, you know and to test a battery to test a power supply it'll tell you you know what it's doing except you have to have a separate multimeter to tell you what the voltage is etc and it didn't tell you cumulatively if you're testing a battery how much how many amp hours or watts or whatever you pulled out of it so I thought it was time to modernize it um, and my first step was to was to increase its capacity this 15 amp it was actually capable of far more than that the, the transistors that provide the heat or the current sinking uh, two N3055s or 2955 sorry I think and yeah MJ2955s which are capable of 15 amps so, so up to theoretically 60 amps you can sink into this thing and it will turn it into heat uh, but the limitation was the heat sinks that they provided as part of the kit was this and very poor heat dissipation uh, they were mounted uh, long ways, as you can see on the diagram here. They are up the sides of this cabinet. It was a bit of a, you know, strange arrangement, but anyway, it worked. Still works. 38 years later, still got it. But well, first, so first step a couple of years ago was to get rid of the um, was to get rid of the power, the heat sinks and go to something better. So let's have a look at that. Okay, so here we go. I've got these really big heat sinks, big monsters. A huge, big H shape. There's two of them. So there's two transistors mounted on each. Uh, output devices, and to shed that load evenly, there are sharing resistors built into the circuit. They were originally wire wound, board mounted, and they dissipate quite a lot of heat. So I rebuilt, I got this um, extrusion done, cut out and bent up for me to, you know, allow me to mount these tra trans uh, resistors onto something that can, di these are uh, 10 watt resistor rated, so I've mounted those up on this plate and they do get quite warm at high current, um, and so I think I've removed two of the major sources of the current and heat capability of this thing by upgrading these and upgrading and I can put a fan I can put fans on these computer fans on it and I've stood it off the ground I haven't done fan, fairly rubber feet yet so I've just got some some uh, wooden dowel on it at the moment but if I put fans on the top here it'll suck air up through and out uh, if I really want to load it up so that's it so, all right let's have a look at this thing working now then one-handedly So currently I've got it set at 13.5 volts and it's drawing 5.7 amps as you can see controlled by the um, variable potentiometer here as you can see I can take this quite high I can get this up to 39 amps I think it is okay so that's my maximum 
current, 39 amps, and that's just turning that into heat and making those heat sinks hot. But there's no problem for this thing to consistently or or constantly draw 15 amps, that's not an issue. Or 20 amps, it'll do that all day. Now the good thing with this, this is what how I modernised it. I bought this module from eBay, or not eBay, of AliExpress actually, and it's a um, battery capacitance DC power detector. So this thing's got a, um, a 100 amp, it's 300 volts, up to 300 volts, and 8 to 300 volts actually, and up to 100 amps. So there's a shunt built into it for up to 100 amps. So I thought, right, oh, well I'll just stick that externally on it, get rid of the old analog meter, and put this on so anything going in and out goes through this. And the advantage here is I can put this load on discharge a battery uh, at a set constant current. So I want to draw say 10 amps out of it. I can set it for 10 amps or very close to it. And then this will cumulatively tell me over, over the time that it's on how many amp hours I've drawn. So if you've got a 100 amp hour battery, you draw 5 amps, that's what uh, that's the, the uh, rating when you uh, most AGM 100 amp hour batteries for example um, you was, you draw current at 5 amps for 20 hours and they will uh, they will achieve 100 amp capacity or better that's the idea if you draw 10 amps out it will be it will reduce it but so you can do this test um, by setting this current constant current. Now this thing has to warm up before it gets stable and I haven't bought a piece of test equipment I've bought, I've built a piece of test equipment. So I'm getting a hundred dollars performance, not a couple of thousand dollars performance. It's not a Tektronix or a HP it's a project. But it does what it's supposed to do and it does it pretty well. So there you go. Just thought I'd quickly show you um, that little unit and I've only recently found this, which is why I've gone ahead and done this, because I couldn't find any notes on this thing. In the 38 years since I built it, we lost all this. But I found this project on an American website. It tells you how to build it, and it's the project from ETI. They'd scanned the entire magazine, which is why this copy's not brilliant. And it's got the schematics. It's got the description of how it works, which is what they always did in this, was tell you how it works. Uh, you know, performance characteristics, etc. Through to wiring diagrams for the original kit and the PC board layout. Even the uh, scale for you went and bought a standard uh, meter and you put this on. So, because uh, it actually was measuring the current across effectively a shunt which was made out of resistors. Um, I think, or might have been a transistor or something. Anyway, it wasn't the best way of doing it, but it was to keep the cost low. So, you can see here on, on the board they had all of the resistors were mounted onto the PC board and they weren't, they got stinking hot. So that's why I say I've upgraded this thing. And I think these were the limitations on how far this, this unit could go. So now I've got, a pro, I've got this thing and I've run it consistently at 25 amps um, but it's really good for testing batteries testing power supplies uh, etc it, it's a great little unit for doing that and giving some sort of confidence or you know well you just can't do it you can't do it unless you've got something that's some form of constant current source it's very difficult to do accurate measurements of battery capacity and power supply performance where you can where you can set it this project originally had um, an input so you could put a sine wave or a square wave into it. You could modulate this thing to vary the load. If you you could even do that. So it was quite it was quite smart at the time. And as I say, I, there's still nothing around much like this that that you can buy off the shelf that will do what this does that I that I've seen. I certainly haven't found anything at or anything like a reasonable price because you could build this thing for your biggest cost would be stuff like heat sinks and stuff but I mean really this meter was 20 bucks or something and at you know it's the, all, all the back end is the original back end is the electronic load so there you go ETI 147 Electronics Today International 147 from October 1980 revised and uh, 
great little unit. I use it a lot. It's great, but it's particularly good these days for testing batteries and see if they're up to speed. Or, you know, testing an antis plug on the back of the car to see what happens at this at the back end versus the front end to see what the voltage is. You put a constant load on it. Uh, effectively what would happen when your car's driving with the DC to DC converted drawing from the alternator you can look at voltage drop across the um, front to back to make sure you've got enough there to run equipment in the in the van and that's where it you know it's a really good unit um, and, and you've got separate terminals here so I could put alligator clips on this and connect to different things I can make up a lead put them on here for smaller power supplies or other things smaller batteries Lots of ways of uh, using it. So that's it. I only just recently finished that upgrade, so I thought I'd show those interested. All right, that's all. Thanks a lot for watching, and give us a like if you like it. Cheers.